Hello, and welcome to this lecture on carbohydrate needs before, during, and after physical activity. Remember, carbohydrate yields glucose, which is your body's preferred source of energy. Having adequate carbohydrate in your diet can help postpone fatigue and maximize performance. The carb recommendations that you'll learn about, both from reading your chapter and from these lectures, are based on grams of carb per kilogram of body weight per day. So it's important for you to keep in mind that one kilogram is equivalent to 2.2 pounds because you may have to convert from pounds to kilogram before determining carbohydrate needs. How much carbohydrate does an athlete need? A casual exerciser who's participating in low intensity activities should aim for somewhere between three to five grams of carb per kilogram of body weight per day. As intensity of exercise increases, you can see that the carbohydrate needs also increase. Someone engaged in moderate intensity activity, one hour per day, needs five to seven grams of carb per kilogram per day. Endurance athletes engaged in one to three hours of exercise a day should have six to 10 grams of carb per kilogram per day. And then ultra endurance athletes, those who are doing four to five hours of intense exercise per day, need upwards of eight to 12 grams of carb per kilogram per day. There's a notion known as carbohydrate loading. Okay, the concept of carbohydrate loading is that in the days and weeks preceding athletic events, you can increase your glycogen stores by slowly increasing the percentage of calories that come from carbohydrate. So we've learned that a well-balanced diet is one that has um, you know, anywhere around 55-ish percent of calories from carb. But with carb loading, athletes can go upwards of 75 or even 80 percent of their calories from carb. Again, note from the third bullet point that they do it in the days and the weeks leading up to their event. You can't just eat a high pasta meal one night before an event and say that it's going to help maximize your glycogen stores. It's also important to note that for every ounce of glycogen that you consume, your body, or that you store rather, your muscles will store three ounces of water. So one thing that accompanies carbohydrate loading is that athletes can expect to also be gaining water weight. Somewhere between two to four pounds of water weight can be accumulated with carbohydrate loading. That plays a role if we think about the impact of low carbohydrate diets. With low carbohydrate diets, you're shedding carbohydrates, so you're shedding your body's glycogen stores. For every ounce of glycogen you're losing, you're also losing three ounces of water, which is why we say the initial weight loss in a low carbohydrate diet is actually water weight loss and not fat. Prior to physical activity, so before your work, you work out, the most important macronutrient is carbohydrate. Okay? Whatever you eat prior to working out should contain carbohydrate. And you should take care to avoid too much fiber, fat, and protein. And the rationale behind that, you actually already know from your studies on digestion, that it takes longer for our bodies to digest foods that contain fat, protein, and fiber. So normally those are good foods for a well-balanced diet, but right before you work out, you don't want those nutrients hanging around in your stomach because they can impede performance. So an example of a really good, almost perfect pre-workout snack is a banana. A banana is pure carbohydrate. It doesn't have any fat or fiber, and it, or a tiny bit of fiber, and doesn't have any protein. It also contains a lot of water, as well as some electrolytes like potassium. So again, the focus on pre activity fuel should be carbohydrate. Here are some examples of some high-carb pre-game meals. About an hour before exercise, eating something with 20 or 200 calories and roughly 30 grams of carb. For example, a small apple, four crackers, and a tablespoon of reduced fat peanut butter. One to two hours before exercise, a larger meal like 500 calories could be consumed that have upwards of 90 grams of carb. That'd be a medium bagel, with two tablespoons of jelly and a cup of milk. And there's a little bit of protein in the milk, but not a ton. Two to three hours before that, your body can handle bigger loads of food, 800 calories, 135 grams of carb. For example, burrito like you see there, made with both a soft tortilla and rice, as well as chicken, black beans, and then pico de gallo, okay? As well as 14 ounces of lemonade. How do you know how much carb you should have before you work out? One hour before your competition, a light meal consisting of 30 grams of carb is a good idea. 
Two hours before, you can figure out your carbs by multiplying your pounds of body weight times 0 0.45. Three hours before, you can do your pounds of body weight times 0 0.9. And more than three hours before your activity, it's okay to have a regular mixed meal that contains carb, fat, and protein, basically because you're far enough out from competition that your body will have a chance to digest those high fiber foods and fat and protein, for example, like you saw in the burrito in the preceding slide. Your book also goes through some examples of nutritional high carbohydrate meals for athletes. On the left, you see a 2,600 calorie diet, whereas on the right, you see 3,300 calories. And these meals are similar with the exception of the fact that the meals on the right are bigger and contain more carbohydrate. And so hence they're contributing about an extra 700 calories per day. But note that if you look carefully at the different components of these meals, you'll see that they're real, pretty high in carbohydrate, about 62 or 63% of the calories from carb. They're low in fat, with less than 23 or 22% of calories from fat, and they're moderate in protein. They're not going overboard on protein. So we know that excess calories from protein, just like excess calories from fat or carb, can promote weight gain. We'll learn in the next lecture that you need a little bit of protein, but many people who are physically active mistakenly think they need a ton of protein, which they don't. During physical activity, some individuals may need to consume foods, and particularly carbohydrates. We generally say that if you're working out for a period of longer than an hour intensely, you may need to eat something. Okay, so if you're going on a three-hour intense bike ride, you might want to pack a banana or, for example, some salty pretzels with you. That's quick carbohydrate with some electrolytes. The primary macronutrient for fuel during physical activity at levels greater than an hour should be carbohydrate. Now there comes a point in some people's GI systems where they're working out to the level where they can't tolerate solid carbohydrate foods. And in those cases, things like high carbohydrate drinks or gels may be useful. But the average person who's jumping on the treadmill for 20 or 30 minutes does not need to have a snack with them while they're working out. Your book also goes through and mentions sports drinks. And it's important to note that sports drinks are mostly consumed by people who don't need them. Okay? You may need an electrolyte replacement drink if you're exercising at very high intensity in very hot weather for longer than a period of 45 minutes or an hour. Anything less than that, you usually don't benefit from having any sports drinks more than you would if you just drank water. Okay? It's important when you're choosing your sports drink to look carefully at the fluid source, the glucose content, and then how many electrolytes are contained in there. Again, your typical casual athlete will be very well served just by rehydrating with water, and then we'll talk about recovery snacks in a second. After you're done working out, what do you eat? This refers to recovery nutrition. Okay, we know that timing is important. Following physical activity, eating within 30 minutes is good but it's been shown that it's even better if you can get a snack in within 15 minutes of following your exercise, because that's the period when you can most readily replenish your glycogen stores. Whereas carbs are essential prior to working out, in the recovery stage, you want a combo of protein and carb. This helps create better muscle refueling and muscle rebuilding. Having a combo of protein and carb reduces cortisol, and cortisol is a hormone that breaks down muscle. Nutrition scientists have determined that a 4 to 1 ratio of carb to protein is ideal for optimal recovery. So that's 4 grams of carb for every 1 gram of protein in the recovery phase. And you should know that carbohydrate and protein drinks are no better for recovery than our carbohydrate protein foods. It's also a good idea in the recovery phase in addition to hydrating yourself with fluid to get some electrolytes from things like sodium, potassium, calm, content of foods like soups, potatoes, yogurt, orange juice, bananas, cheeses, breads, and pasta. Okay, water is, for most people, the best recovery fluid. There are sports drinks and high water fruits like grapes, oranges, watermelon, and fruit drinks. Some ideas for recovery snacks. These are things that contain a combination of carb and protein, are yogurt and fruit, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, turkey sandwich, cheese quesadilla, cereal and milk, pita and hummus, dried fruit and nuts, or a high fiber granola bar and fruit. As you can see, they're pretty normal foods. You don't have to buy any special foods for recovery. 
If you're interested in making a shake, because some people tend to tolerate liquids better than solids following activity, you don't have to buy a fancy shake. You can actually make your own. And this shake, the recipe that you see pictured here, will provide you with 300 calories, 60 grams of carb, and 15 grams of protein, which, as you can see, meets that 4 to 1 carb to protein ratio. How about bars? There are many different bars on the market, the majority of which you probably don't need. Okay, There's nothing magical about bars. You should be focusing on getting your nutrients from food first. Okay, All calories give you energy, not just energy from energy bars. Okay, energy bars can be a helpful way, especially if they're high in carb and low in protein, to give you two to 300 calories before a workout. Although note that many bars will have too much protein and oftentimes too much fat to be consumed right before a workout. That protein and fat can stay in your system because it takes so long to digest can actually impede performance. Okay, so bars are no more digestible than our whole foods. And if you are eating certain energy bars, especially those that are very high in protein, you do need to concentrate on increasing the amount of water in your diet so that you do not become dehydrated. Some final tips on sports nutrition. Never try an untested food close to performance time. Part of training means training your body, but also training with your foods. Eating foods that you know you can tolerate and learning how to tolerate foods, as opposed to trying them out right before you work out. If you find you're craving sweets, that may be an indication that you're under eating. Small, frequent meals with pre- and post-workout snacks are ideal. If you're looking for, let's say, the perfect workout food, milk, if you can tolerate it, is the closest thing to a superfood. As in the recovery phase, it contains protein and carbohydrate, plus calcium and lots of fluid for hydration. B vitamins are not needed in any greater quantities by athletes than our non-athlete needs. B vitamins don't give you energy. However, if you had insufficient B vitamin intake, you would have problems with energy metabolism. Although since you know that the majority of B vitamins are found in many types of grain foods in the United States, and we all get plenty of those, you're unlikely to have insufficient B vitamin levels. You can, and you should, be getting 100% of your nutrient needs from foods and not from supplements.